Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Let me start the video off by apologizing. I know it has been, God, almost a month since the last video upload talking about our discus breakdown, but I have been sick like crazy the past couple of weeks. Not COVID, not the flu, some weird upper respiratory virus that's been going around and I got hit with it. I couldn't even talk without coughing, hacking, choking. I mean, it was really, really bad for a while. And um, yeah, it was really awful. So I could not complete this video. I tried it a few times. I tried it a few weeks ago. I literally could not get through this. I could not talk in this video without constantly coughing and hacking up a lung. So I apologize. I know we're at the end of the season, but I wanna get through with this video today to complete this playlist so that those people that throw over the summer, the masters throwers, the youth throwers, the coaches that watch this to have their summer meets, people that are still gonna practice over the summer, coaches that are still gonna work with their kids over the summer, you'll have this in your arsenal. Basically today, is where we put it all together. And we start talking about pivot drills out the back of the circle. So in the last video, we talked about getting weight on your left foot. We gave you that idea of a top and how you have to shift your weight onto your left foot so that you can pivot and attack that circle. You can pivot into that South African position. Remember, it's not a spin. We are pivoting and driving. So now we're gonna work on that pivot. We're gonna do some of those pivot drills and we're gonna show you what they look like in the circle. So basically what you're gonna do, just like you've been doing with all of your practice days, is you're gonna start with a day six and beyond recap. Basically you're gonna be going back and you're gonna be doing a custom uh, warm up and a custom recap for your team. So if your team needs more power position drills, you're gonna do more of those in your warm up. If your team needs more of those mirror turn, half turn drills, you're going to do it in your warm up. South Africans in the warm up. What we did last week, which was the three o'clock to nine o'clock drill, opening up, pushing weight onto that left foot, pivoting, starting off with that pivot. Again, you're going to do more of that. Now the shifting and the pivoting, this is where we really have to talk about weight shift. We have to talk about balance, okay? It is not a spin. Remember, just like last video, think of this like a top. You cannot just stand a top up on the point and expect it to balance. At the same time, you cannot lay that top flat on the ground, spin it, and expect it to get up on the point all by itself. That's not how it works. Two things have to be present. You have to put all of the weight on the point and then you physically have to move that top. That's how it spins around and that's how it balances on the point. We have to think of it when we do these drills. So I teach it very, very easily. I teach it in three parts. The first is a 90 degree pivot. From there we go to a 180 degree pivot and then from there a 360 degree pivot. Once your athletes master that, you can add a med ball and we're gonna show you how to do that in the circle. After that, we are going to pivot into that South African. And basically, we're gonna use a couple of tools. Again, you don't have to have exactly what's here. I've had athletes use so many different things at practice, but I like to use a five gallon bucket here in the gym. We have plenty of them to use, so it works great when we're doing our drills. We're gonna use that five gallon bucket and a very low six inch plyo box. And then basically, we're gonna just take that bucket away and just use the box. And then from there, everybody, we're just gonna put it all together. And we're gonna show you all of those puzzle pieces. So essentially, we have built sort of an arsenal for you. We have given you all of the ammunition. We've given you all of the rounds, everything that you need. You've got the weapon, that's your brain. Now you have the ammo, okay? So all of the drills that we've talked about today and in the previous six videos, you have all of that in your arsenal that you can bring to practice. So you're gonna to start to be able to pick out those puzzle pieces. You're gonna be able to start to pick out and look for what's breaking down. You're gonna say, okay, I can see the pivot. I can see the South African. I can see the wall drill, but the mirror turn is not there. They're off balance. We're gonna do more of this drill from day three or more of this drill from day four, more of this drill from day one. Where power position looks good, but they're not grounding. Okay, let's do some grounding drills. All of that stuff is in 
this seven video playlist. Okay, so you can go back, you can look, you can pick all of the drills out from the playlist, and then you can use that with your throwers and make it a specific drill, a specific thing that they need to improve their throw. All right, so let's talk about pivoting. Okay, so the way that I break down the pivot, the way that I explain this to my throwers is very simple. When you get in a circle, a circle is 360 degrees, okay? So we got a 360 degree circle. Half of that circle is a 180, okay? One quarter of that circle is 90 degrees. So what I like to do with my athletes is not necessarily get them in the circle, but I show them in the circle sort of how this all adds up, how this all works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my left foot, because that's the foot I'm going to pivot on, that's the foot I'm going to turn with. I'm gonna put that foot in the middle of the circle, and I'm gonna have my right foot over here towards three o'clock. And we're gonna start by showing them a 90 degree pivot. Here's how I do it. The first thing I want to do is make that letter T position with my hands. And just like last week, we're going to start moving that three o'clock to nine o'clock. And as we move, we're going to shift and lift. So here, they should have already done a bunch of these. Three o'clock to nine o'clock, reach, shift, and lift. As soon as they're getting onto that left foot, their right foot is coming off the ground. They might lose their balance a little bit. They're just starting out, that's fine. But now we're gonna to start to move 90 degrees. So letter T, three o'clock to nine o'clock, reach, shift, lift, turn 90 degrees. In, turn 90 degrees. In, turn 90 degrees. In, turn 90 degrees. And we're just gonna repeat. Turn 90 degrees. Turn 90 degrees, I'll put my hand on my hip. Turn 90 degrees, turn 90 degrees, rinse and repeat. All right, so turning 90 degrees, pretty simple stuff. The thing that you're gonna notice is it's really easy for your athletes because they're not doing that much movement. They're just kind of going 90 degrees this way. They don't really have to balance on that left foot or really try hard and work really hard to balance on that left foot. They basically are just picking up that right foot. We talked about that idea of the skateboarder where they push through that right foot and they're doing a little quarter turn. Super, super simple. Now we're gonna move on to 180s. 180s are typically where your throwers are gonna go, all right, this is a little bit tougher now because I have to stay on my left foot longer. I have to be balanced on my left foot, balanced on the point longer. So a 180 is just what it sounds like. Again, I'm gonna pretend I've got my hand on my hip so you guys can keep an eye on my left side. In, out, and 180. In, out, 180. In, out, 180. Notice how I'm pushing through my right foot like that skateboarder. I'm pushing through that right foot, 180. Out, 180, in, out, 180. Getting a little dizzy, but you get the idea. In, out, 180, in, out, 180, in, out, 180. Pretty simple stuff. Again, it's gonna take them a while and they're gonna realize, wow, I really have to balance on my left foot. I really have to stick my weight on my left foot. Again, so it's a fantastic way of showing them it's not just a quick little spin. They have to shift their weight and turn while they're fully balanced on the ball of that left foot. So the 360, this is when your athletes are gonna freak out a little bit. This is when your athletes are gonna go, okay, now I just had to go from 90 to 180 and that was tough. I had to stay balanced on the point. I had to stay balanced on my left toe for a long time. Now I gotta do a 360, how's this gonna work? It's tough, I gotta tell you, 360s are not easy. I might not, I might not be able to make these look good on camera, especially because I squatted today. You can't tell from my skinny little chicken legs, but I do squat often, and I'm sore as heck right now. I'm like, I need to get some food in me, I'm tired, I'm sore, it's 9.30 at night, and I haven't had dinner yet. So 
I want to make sure that I really keep my balance. I really shift my weight and push my weight over to do these 360s. So let's give it a try. Again, I'm going to put my hand on my hip. You can have your athletes with their arms out like that letter T. You can have them hold something in their hand, whatever you want to do. But for right now, open hand, other hand on the hip, my throwing arm on my hip. Focus on that 360. Let's see. In, out, ah, oh, fell, dropped the heel. See that? That's what your athletes might do. They drop the heel. Around, woo, there's one, a little bit wobbly. Around, oh, almost made it. That was like a 340. Let's see. Around, there we go. Around, up, oh, almost. I dropped the heel again. This is when your athletes are going to realize. Now, obviously, there's a good one. Obviously, they're not going to be doing a 360 when they come out of the back of the circle. I mean, but what we want to do is get them training, make it a little tough on them, get them working. Oh, better. And they'll notice, hey, my left arm, oh, I dropped my heel. My left arm kind of balances my right leg. If I keep my right leg long and my left arm long, I can balance a little bit better. Look at that. Oh, so if I bring my arms together, I can kind of balance pretty good. But like if I stay long left, long right, I can balance. If I keep my knees far apart, I can balance. Hey, that's the lesson to take from this. Long left arm with that reach, long right leg with that reach. Sort of like someone on a tightrope holding that long pole. It helps them keep their balance. Helps them keep their balance. Long right leg, long left arm, you're able to balance. Keep the knees apart, just like we talked about in the last video. Now we're gonna add some weight to this, and then we're gonna show you an even better way of having them balance and keep their knees really far apart. Okay, so now we're just gonna do the same exact drills, those same three drills, and we're gonna add a little bit of weight. So you gotta imagine, now that I'm trying to go on my left, I have this eight pound medicine ball and you can go really heavy, 10, 12, 15, 20 pounds, whatever. I've got this really heavy medicine ball that's trying to pull me this way. So now I have to work even harder to get my weight over on my left. I basically have this eight pound tumor stuck on the side of my butt. What am I gonna do now? Well, the same kind of thing. Now we're gonna turn in and 90. Oh, it's a struggle because this thing's trying to push you to the right and you're trying to go to the left. But 90s, not bad. See that? A little heavy. 90, shift, that's better. Shift, that's better. How about a 180? Shift, good. 180, shift. Oh, that's better. See how far I have to reach to keep my balance. 180. Watch the reach, 180, a little bit easier. Let's try the big one, 360. I haven't done these in years, let's see. Reach, whoa, 360, a little bit more than 360. Reach, boom. Reach, ah, almost, it's tough. Your athletes are really gonna have to work at this, but then when they're done, put the med ball down, now, Oh, so much easier to balance. Wow, without that eight pound ball on my hip, so much easier to balance. The other little bonus one I'll give you is for my more advanced athletes, when we're out at the circle and they're having trouble, I'll have them just do a 360. I'll have them come right up here, and hey, just right here, without the discus in their hand, do a 360. And if they're having trouble, if they're falling all over the place, or if they're kind of falling into the middle, over rotating, all the stuff that happens when you're not balanced on that left foot, I'll have them just pop a 360. And I go, feel how you had to shift your weight? Feel how you had to push over? Good, now just shift your weight the same way and drive down the middle. If they're still not getting it, if they're super advanced, like my seniors and my college athletes, and they've been doing these drills for a long time, I'll have them just try to do as much as possible. So, like that's, what would that be, a 540 or whatever? Ooh, 
almost all the way around. I'll have him stay on that left foot as long as possible. Stay on that left foot as long as possible. And then all of a sudden they get in circle and they're able to turn out the back and everything looks really good because they're able to balance on that left foot a lot better because they were doing those extra long 360s, 360 plus. Okay, so now we've got the idea of shifting our weight and pivoting. And we talked a little bit more about it, how we want the knees spread apart. We talked about it in the day six video, and we just mentioned it now, how you have that long left leg, I'm sorry, long left arm, long right leg. You wanna keep your knees separated. We don't wanna see the knees close together. We don't wanna see the arm in tight. We gotta keep our balance. Long left arm, long right leg. Now we're in balance, but we've got to keep our knees far apart. So what's a good way of doing that? Well, introduce the five gallon bucket. Now, if you don't have a five gallon bucket, maybe you have a traffic cone, maybe you have a backpack, maybe you have a uh, milk carton that you filled with discuses and shot puts and whatnot at practice. You've got something, a pylon from the football field. You've got something that you can get that leg over. I like the five gallon bucket because it's a little bit wider, but use whatever you have available, okay? It doesn't have to be a five gallon bucket. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with that five gallon bucket. As a right-handed thrower, it's gonna be just in front of my left foot, probably about 12 to 15 inches in front of my left foot, and it's gonna be just off center. It's gonna be a little left, okay? So it's not perfectly lined up with my foot, and it's not touching my foot. I've got enough room for my big feet to get around so that I don't hit it with my heel, essentially. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to pivot out of the back of that circle and we're going to pivot around the bucket. We don't wanna kick the bucket. Get it? Don't kick the bucket. So we're here, we're gonna reach over on that left like we've been doing, nice wide right leg, and we're gonna stop in that South African position, okay? And then just have him step back over and go again in out, boom, South African. Left foot pointing down towards six o'clock. Right foot made a nice wide sweep. We're gonna do it again. In, out, South African. And then one more. We're gonna go in, out, South African. Now at this point, we can have your athletes do this and then complete the South African and throw. Or we can move on to the next drill which is gonna help them with their foot position as they get ready to drive into that circle. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about the path of the thrower's right foot as they pivot out of the back of the circle. The one thing that we don't wanna do is all of the up, down, up, downs that we see from a lot of throwers. So if I were just to move this bucket so you can see real quick, we don't wanna do a lot of up, down, up, downs. What do we mean by up, down, up, down? Well, if you take a look at my right foot and I get out of the back of the circle, my right foot comes around and it stays pretty low. It's about maybe six inches off the ground as I get into that South African position. It stays low. I like to tell my athletes it's like a golf club. You're hitting a ball off a tee. We don't wanna see that foot go like up here, down here, this big kicking motion where it's like up, down, up with all this up and down kicking. You know, they're low in the back and then they kick this foot up by their butt and they stand up and then they go down, and then they run, and they're doing all this up, down, kicking type of stuff. We want the foot to stay pretty low to the ground. Toe up, heel close to the ground, bang, into the South African. Okay, so in, out, foot stays low, sweep into the South African. So what do we do? How do we keep their foot low? Well, we're gonna put the bucket back, and now is when we introduce a little six inch plyo box. Now again, you don't have to have a six inch plyo box. You can use stacked up two by fours. You can use really anything that you have available. All we're gonna do is now we're gonna put our heel on top of the box. So we're gonna pivot out of the back, around heel on top of the box. Okay, let's see it again. Pivot out of the back, heel on top of the box. See that? It prepares us for that big sweep into the middle. Here, heel on top of the box. Now, again, these don't look perfect, and they probably won't look perfect, but heel on top of the box, your athletes are gonna be wiggling, they're gonna be wobbling all over the place, that's okay. We want them to be 
in a difficult position. You want that heel to stop on top. It's not going to look pretty. It's a tough drill. They're going to be all over the place. But getting them to stop and get that heel down and the toe up is going to help our next step when we get rid of the box and we have them start to put this puzzle together. Okay, so you can do this in one of two ways, one of two orders. You can get rid of the box first, or you can get rid of the bucket. Just for the sake of the video so that you can see exactly what's going on with my left foot, I'm gonna get rid of the bucket, put the bucket over here, and now I'm gonna show you that same drill all over again without the bucket, but still putting the heel on top of the box. So we're here, pivot, boom, heel on top of the box, and from here, if they want, they can drive into zero support into that South African position and stop when they get to their power position. Don't have them finish their throws. Here, out, boom. I missed it a little bit, but that's okay. Again, I can't really push off my right, so I'm gonna drive off the left. Boom, get into that power position. So you can start to see the puzzle pieces, right? Pivot out of the back. Okay, we're gonna drive, sweep, drive, boom. All right, little off balance, we're working on it. Now the next step, we're just gonna get rid of the box. So, pick the box up, get it out of the way. They're not thinking about it. Now, what do you think we're gonna do? Now we're just gonna pivot into that South African. We're gonna, we're gonna pretend that the bucket is still there. We're gonna pretend that the box is still there. Here, pivot, South African. Hey, that's pretty good, right? You can start to see the pieces. So imagine the bucket is there. Imagine the box is there. Pivot, box, boom, boom. That's not bad. Now we're starting to put this puzzle together a little bit. In, out, sweep. Whoa, that's pretty good too. That's how this works. Now you can see the full throw coming together. You can see the 180. You can see where the bucket used to be. You can see where the box used to be. You can see the South African. You can see the wall drill. You can see the mirror turn. You can see the power position. You can see the left arm back, the shoulders back, the chest back. All that stuff we've been doing, you can take little bits and pieces of these drills, put them all together. You can see all the puzzle pieces. You can see where they all connect. That's your job as a coach, is now to look at your throwers, start them in the back of the circle and go, where is the disconnect? Where is the puzzle piece not fully connected? Where is there the separation? Where is that picture not making sense, not glued together? Maybe it's in the back of the circle. Hey, you didn't reach around the bucket. Whoops, sorry coach. Hey, you reached around the bucket, but your toe was down and you're running, you're sprinting through the circle. You're not sweeping. Oh, and then we're gonna put the box back. Hey, when you get to the middle, everything looks really, really good. But when you get to the middle, you're wide open. Oh, looks like we gotta work on holding our chest back, holding our left arm back. You get to see what pieces are missing from the puzzle. That's what this is all about. So now, as you can tell, it's time to put this all together. It's time to put the throw all together for your athletes. It's time to connect all those pieces and make the puzzle whole. See what that entire picture looks like. Again, it's not gonna look pretty. It's not gonna look perfect. They're new, they're beginners. They're working on this stuff. Maybe it's been six months, maybe it's been nine months since they've done the full throw, since they've done that full turn out of the back. But we're gonna put it together. They're gonna put all those steps together. The orange bucket, it's not gonna be there, but let's pretend. The box, it's not gonna be there, but let's pretend. The wall in the wall drill, it's not gonna be there, but let's pretend. All the drills that we did, okay, you need to take a look and see what's missing, see what's not connected. So from here, it's gonna be nice, slow, kind of easy throws. Here, we're gonna pivot, we're gonna reach, box, back. Oh, few things, a few things didn't go right. A few things looked a little weird. What was it? As your coach, what did your eyes see? Did you see 
hey, maybe my sweep wasn't good enough. Maybe I didn't hit the wall drill. Maybe I didn't hold my left arm back. Maybe I didn't ground correctly. Maybe I didn't turn my knee down the middle. Maybe I didn't finish. All that stuff that we talked about, this is your job. Take a look at the puzzle. What piece is missing? What piece is not connected? What can you pull out and have your athletes work on that one part of the throw, that one ingredient? What is it that you're gonna have them work on? What drill are you gonna give them? It all depends on what you see in their throw. So that's where I'm gonna leave you today, guys. I'm gonna make sure, go through all these previous videos. Take out all the drills, take out all the positions, put them in your mind, write them down on paper, take it out to practice with your throwers, find out what puzzle pieces are missing, find out what is not in their throw, what might look bad, might, might look out of balance, body position, body awareness, where are they, are they over rotating? Now you have the ammunition, you have all the drills, you have all the positions to go to your practice and have your athletes complete this full throw in the discus. Alrighty, that is gonna do it from here, guys. I am a super hot, super sweaty mess. The last video series I had sweatshirts on, now it's like 80 degrees in the gym and I have a t-shirt on. So again, my apologies for getting this final video to you so late, but if you haven't done so already, there are gonna be more videos like this coming out all throughout the summer. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below and make sure to also click that notification bell. While you're down there, give the video a like and leave me a comment. Let me know what you want me to cover in my next video series. Let me know exactly what you are looking for, what problems your athletes are having or what problems you're having in the circle. And I'll be able to get back to you with an answer very, very quickly. Again, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for tuning into this video series. If there's any other questions, please leave them right down below and make sure guys, it really helps out a lot. Check out the links that are popping up right now on the screen. Screen. You can buy your equipment right from our website. You can get on, uh, online coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching through our app as well. It's a really awesome way of staying in touch and getting the help that you need. Thanks again for watching the video, everybody, and I will see you in the next one.